Hello, everyone. This is HIS 1050. That's History of the Headlines, the United States since World War II. I'm your instructor, James McQuaid. You can call me James. Most people actually call me Jamie. That's the name I prefer. Um, but as long as you're not saying like, hey, you, I'll be pretty uh, responsive to most forms of communication. Now, this is specifically like an asynchronous online class. Asynchronous meaning like we're not synchronized. We're not doing synchronous meetings or synchronized swimming. Um, we are, in a sense, kind of off uh, in our own uh, in our own spheres, kind of doing the work of the class uh, bit by bit, week by week throughout the spring semester. That being said, I've never actually taught a an asynchronous class before, even when we were, uh, you know, social distancing, working from home remotely online, we weren't in person. I've always taught synchronous classes where I've met with my students and we've gone over things together. And so that's definitely more of my teaching style. And so in keeping with that, instead of just throwing the syllabus up on to our Canvas page and like just basically taking this assumption that, you know, they'll figure it out there. They're grown adults, they know how to read and all of this stuff. I did want to, to make this video, um, it's an optional video. None of this stuff is going to appear on the final exam, of course, but I did want to make this video where I kind of walk through uh, my thought process for creating the class, why things are organized the way they are, and maybe show you all some things that you uh, didn't know were resources that would be available to you in this class, or maybe some things, uh, academic shortcuts that you didn't know were options for you, maybe some student resources you hadn't been aware of. Uh, that being said, though, if you are, if you're bold and if you're brash and if you don't want to, I don't know how long this video is actually going to go on, hopefully uh, not an hour. But if uh, if you don't feel like you need this kind of an introduction, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to watch this video all the way through. Those of you who do decide to stay, um, I'm going to make it, uh, I'm going to make it my best effort to make sure this video is useful to you so you don't walk away from this uh, feeling like you've wasted any of your time, right? But with any kind of introductory class where we all have our meet and greet together, we do the name game, we, uh, we shake our neighbor's hand, we, you know, say what our favorite movie is, what our favorite color is, what our least favorite type of, uh, of Americanized cuisine is, before we do all of that, we usually go through this process of a kind of laboratively and moribundly kind of just eking our way through the syllabus. Um, that's important because uh, a lot of times people don't read the syllabus. And so if uh, we're deciding between not reading the syllabus at all and at least having some ground, uh, it is uh, worthwhile kind of uh, looking at the syllabus together. This isn't to say no one in watching this is going to read the syllabus, but for those of you who, uh, who it may slip your mind, uh, it's helpful to kind of cover what all is going to be in class. So let's start with general class information, right? What, what all is in class? Well, as it turns out, uh, the United States since World War II, since 1945, is a pretty big topic. Um, and this paragraph isn't going to really capture everything that we're going to talk about, but it does do a good, uh, it, it tries, right? It gives it a good old college try. Some of the topics that we're going to discuss, um, some of the things that you will be expected to do, things like turn in assignments, critically evaluate literature, all of these sorts of things, how they relate to core concepts like imperialism, warfare, race and racism, institutional sexism, gender, cultural concepts, how all of these things relate to, together is going to factor into our class and it's going to really contextualize what we're learning and what we're talking about. So if at times uh, we're talking about a subject in class that seems uh, that you don't feel like you understand very well, I say talking, uh, like we're not synchronously meeting, but discussing, you know, we have discussion boards and that. If we're discussing a topic that you know, you aren't quite understanding, that's to be expected. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask for backup information or maybe some background context that your students or, or fellow students or myself, you know, may be aware of that you might not be. Um, there's no shame in admitting you don't know anything, uh, right? The only shame is pretending you know when you actually don't. It's called ignorance. But yeah, so there is going to be a wide berth of coverage for this class. These are just a couple of the terms you'll be expected to uh, to kind of come to grips with throughout the, the semester together, right? Specifically though, our class has some learning objectives. History 1050 fulfills the civic literacy and social inquiry requirements for Wayne State's general education curriculum. So it's what we call a two for one. These uh, paragraphs here kind of go into more detail about what the civic literacy requirement uh, is, what you're going to be expected to do to demonstrate that, and same thing with social inquiry down here at the bottom. And then, of course, there is the general education program if you want to follow up and, and get more information about, about those requirements, right? 
but in a in a very roundabout way, this is kind of what the class is going to center on. It's what we're going to focus on. It's really the the craft of looking at civic literacy and social inquiry and kind of like discussing and interrogating these themes and topics is going to be a lot of what we're doing in class together. Okay, so we're going to talk about a lot and we're going to discuss a lot. What are we reading? Well, here you'll see that there are three uh, required course texts for class. Um, there's a standard textbook. It's uh, by Glenda Gilmore and Thomas Segrew. Comes highly recommended. Thomas Segrew has a fabulous book about the history of Detroit. Uh, I recommend you read it if you ever have some downtime. It's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal history. Uh, but they co-author our textbook, These United States and Nation in, in the Making. Uh, it's a pretty recent publication. It's pretty up to date. There are also two autobiographies. Now, we'll get into the autobiographies in just a little bit here, but you only have to read one of them. Uh, the first four weeks of the semester, you will be tasked with choosing uh, either Ron Kovic's Born on the Fourth of July or Asada Shakur's Asada and Autobiography. Um, they are two memoirs written by two political activists. Uh, they both have, uh, they both describe their childhoods growing up. They both describe their involvement in activism, kind of the the trauma, the experiences, and the hardship that they go to that leads them to turn to a life of political activism, a desire to make the world better, and then ultimately what comes out of that activism, right? Uh, Asada Shakur is not going to have the exact same experiences as Ron Kovic, um, but I think that if they were to meet in a bar in Havana somewhere, they might have a very productive and amicable conversation. So there are some similarities. There are also some stark differences between these two authors. You are going to read one of these books. And in lieu of like a formal, like multiple choice midterm, um, you'll be submitting uh, a kind of in-depth book review on the, on the memoir you've chosen and kind of explaining, you know, hey, I read this book. This is what I found out. This is why I think it's important. Uh, so, you know, feel free to do some background research. Feel free to do a little digging before you make the choice of which of these two books you're going to want to read. Um, I am a fan of both of them. I love both of them for different reasons. Um, so those are required texts, right? The textbook and then one of these two. All right, so what are we going to be doing in class, right? What are we going to be graded on? Well, we have a breakdown of a couple core class assignments. By far, the biggest one is online participation specifically discussion board posts, right? For each week, uh, starting at 12.01 a.m. Sunday and until the very end of the day, Friday, that's 11.59 p.m. I use Saturday for grading, so I can't be accepting work that day. But throughout those six days, uh, there will be usually uh, two lectures posted to Canvas, um, a couple of readings for the week. And uh, Every now and again, there will be some of these uh, other assignments that we're going over, but for the most part, you're going to be expected to participate in discussion boards. Each week, there will be a couple of different topics for you to choose from, a couple of different prompts. Some of them will be based on the lectures. Some of them will be based on the readings. Um, there will always be more than two, but you only have to pick two to respond to. And for, uh, for each topic, you'll be expected to post at least one response to the prompt. So, the, the very first uh, post in the discussion board thread will ask you a couple questions. You'll respond to at least some of the questions that are in the prompt. You don't have to respond to all of them, but uh, respond enough so that your response is about 300 words, right? If, you're, if your response is 295 words, I'm not going to mark you absent for that week. That's a little, uh, it's a little ridiculous to me to do that. But 300 words is a good uh, rule of thumb to shoot for. If you're writing at 200 words, you're probably not thinking about some of these prompts enough and you should strive to like write down a little bit more. In addition to making that response, you'll want to come back when some of your other colleagues, some of your other classmates have written responses and you'll wanna try responding to them too, um, right? Like maybe uh, your classmate um, said something or noticed something or pointed something out that you didn't think of. And you said, oh, that's a really good idea. Um, this is something that you might not have thought of, and I'm going to include it in this reply. 150 words is like three or four sentences, long sentences, but three or four sentences, right? It's not too bad. It's like a big paragraph, medium to big paragraph. Um, or you might disagree with them entirely. Uh, your classmate might say something about a topic that we uh, are discovering and or discussing about or talking about. And you might think, you know what, that doesn't really sit well with me. I don't like that response and here's why, right? So you might be disagreeing with your classmates. It's perfectly fine to disagree with people. You do have to be uh, civil. You have to respect one another um, and yeah. 
So our online participation is going to be uh, fairly straightforward, right? You'll watch the two lectures. Some weeks there will only be one because it will be a longer lecture and it seems a little unfair to me to, to throw more than our regular standard lecture content at you in a given week. So there might be some weeks where there's only one lecture. There will be a couple of readings and you'll respond to those and you'll have a discussion in the discussion board. The actual uh, online participation segment of the class will make up half of your class grade. All right, well, what else are we doing, right? Oh, and there's a little checklist here, right? So if you're unsure if you filled the weekly, weekly requirements for class, just go through this uh, through this checklist. If you did all of these four things, then you should be set. Okay, what else are we doing in class? If online participation only accounts for 50% of our grade, where does the other 50% come from? Well, that's where these other three big assignments come in. Um, our first big assignment is going to be a collaborative class textbook. We're building a collaborative class textbook together. Every single week, there will be a couple of students who will have signed up to take notes for that week. Um, how you take notes is a little fluid. Um, you might want to focus on the vocabulary uh, for that week, some major terms that are in the lectures. You might want to uh, put together some timelines. You might want to summarize the readings. Uh, you might want to summarize the discussion board posts that are going on. If you're running a little bit late, you're kind of running out of ideas. Let's check the discussion board and see what some of these debates are looking like. Your notes should be about two pages though, right? Uh, about 500 words in total. So if you're doing the standard Times New Roman 12 point double spaced font and all of that, you know, about two pages. And at the end of the week, by Friday at, uh, at 11.59, that midnight hour, um, you'll wanna submit those to me and I will be able to look them over, I'll be able to grade them, and then they will go into a shared Google Doc that everyone can see. And it's called our collaborative class textbook. You can kind of see it here, right? Um, we have our cover, we have a little menu over at the side so you can kind of like quick point between the, the weeks or the chapters, so to speak, that are available. Um, no one is going to be able to sign up for week one because uh, this lecture is at the start of week one. I don't want anyone to have to rush in to start taking notes right now and they haven't been acclimated into class. But we have an example for week one. Um, there are two lectures for the week. This is the first one. There is a second one about America before and after World War II. Uh, and based on that lecture and based on the readings that are available for week one, we have some vocabulary terms, right? We have uh, some chapter summaries from the readings that are available. So this is a really good example of what your uh, what your notes page will look like, right? I don't want everyone to feel like they have to make sure they cover everything in their notes because you might notice that if we don't have week one, there's only six other weeks when there are more than six students in class. So there are going to be multiple students, uh, multiple of your peers kind of working alongside you in a given week. Uh, and so if you do end up missing something in your notes, it's the odds are overwhelmingly more than likely that someone else is going to catch what you missed, right? Um, so the notes are a good way to kind of uh, pitch into this collaborative enterprise we're putting together. At the end of the semester, we'll have a big long kind of textbook that's of our own uh, creation, very groovy, very cooperative. So this is also a resource that you'll be able to use as you're working on assignments later in the semester too, right? So we have our notes pages. Our notes page is gonna be worth 100 points. That's about 10% of the grade. If you completely miss it, um, you know, no harm, no foul. We all go through things. This is still a global pandemic, even though we're starting to come out of it. Uh, people are gonna go through hardships right now. If you don't exactly uh, do great on any given assignment, the uh, syllabus is constructed so that it won't destroy your grade. Okay, so that's another 10%. What, are, what else are we doing? Well, we've talked about these two books that uh, that we're going to be reading, right? And after we take our time to read one of these two memoirs, you're going to write a uh, a reaction, kind of a uh, a formal book review, um, an analysis of what goes on in these memoirs, and you're going to connect it, uh, connect some of the themes, some of the motifs in the reading that you're seeing to the rest of class, right? So. In Asada, an autobiography, X, Y, and Z happens. Where does this pair up with all of the other readings and lectures we've been doing, right? Where is de facto and du jour segregation coming up in our lectures? Where is it coming up in our textbook? Where is it coming up in class discussions and news articles or reading in, in the discussion board posts? So 
in lieu of a, in a, of a midterm exam, and I don't want to have exams in this class because I know how terrifying they are for people, we are going to be doing these projects instead, right? Now, for each of these uh, major assignments, there is going to be an assignment sheet uh, posted on Canvas. And these assignment sheets will have a couple, a couple of things, right? They'll have basically more in-depth information. Uh, so what exactly you're going to be doing for the assignment, um, specific requirements, like how many words is it? Uh, what do you have to do when you submit it? But also maybe, uh, maybe some suggestions if you're not really quite sure where to start. You know, how, uh, if you're not sure how to write a paper, maybe like, okay, well, if you can't think of a topic, here are a couple on this page that you'll see here. So there's always going to be some constructive or helpful suggestions on these assignment sheets, if at all possible. And then uh, I'm definitely type A. I know a lot of other people in this class might be, might or might not be type A. If you're not, that's fine. If you are, I am including grading rubrics on all these, right? So once you're uh, typing up your book report, when you're typing up your final project, as you're kind of typing up your notes, there will be all these grading rubrics for you to kind of go down and check off the list. Did I cover uh, Kovic or Shakur's experiences as a child? Did I cover their experience is their entry into political activism? Are my papers free from grammatical errors? Are they? Make sure you check. So we have all of these assignment sheets that kind of get into more information about these, but what you should know now is that uh, the midterm is going to be the book report. You're not going to take a huge cumbersome exam that you have looming over your head. You'll just turn in a book report. Um, so with the knowledge that this book report is going to be due halfway through the semester, make sure you aren't pushing reading off to the very uh, end of the semester. Reading is going to be a little light uh, these first couple weeks, and that's to give you time to read one of these two memoirs. And then in lieu of a final, lastly, we're going to have a history kind of magazine or a zine final project. Uh, this is a very, uh, my goal at least, is that it's a creative uh, kind of outlet for you uh, for the end of the semester where you're going to choose a time period uh, and you're going to choose kind of a ideological lens or a historical lens and you're gonna make a magazine. What's going on in the time period you've chosen, right? Your magazine is being published at a given point um what's going on what's going on in the world in 1963 if your publication date is 1963 what's going on in 1982 if that's where you're when you're publishing your magazine and depending on kind of this ideological lens you adopt how do you feel about that right so again we have some examples right you can write an environmentalist newsletter in the 1980s you can write a uh, civil rights newsletter in the 1950s and you'll want to review what's going on in the world. You want to tell me what your uh, what your hype, what your author, right, the writers of the zine would think about that, what they think should be done about it. And again, of course, with every uh, all of these other uh, assignments, there will be a grading rubric just in case you're a little worried about if you're if you're checking all the all the boxes, if you're crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's, we'll have this grading rubric for you uh, to double check, right? There are also going to be some extra credit opportunities throughout the semester. There's going to be five in total. Uh, each extra credit opportunity will raise your grade by a percent. So if you complete all five, that is a 5% grade boost. You can kind of see the course grading breakdown uh, at the bottom of this, uh, this fourth page here, right? So we have the 50% for uh, online participation. We have our notes page, our autobiography, in our final project. And then uh, if you just, if something comes up and you end up taking a hit in one of these assignments, there is that potential to kind of re, uh, recoup your losses there too. We of course have uh, course policies here. I'm not gonna spend too much time on these. I encourage you to go over all of them because it is important material. Um, things about student disability services, how to contact student disability services um, electronically, especially because we are still trying to socially distance. Um, what is academic misbehavior? Believe it or not, academic misbehavior is more than plagiarism. A lot of times people will tell you, don't plagiarize. I would reiterate that, right? Don't plagiarize. It's a really, uh, people who plagiarize don't realize a lot of the times that in order to commit plagiarism well, they're often putting in more work uh, to do that than they are just if they would just complete the assignment. And there's always that chance of discovery. If you are found committing plagiarism, right, there are certain uh, consequences to that. But academic misbehavior goes beyond plagiarism. 
Uh, and so it's worth kind of uh, looking that over when you get some time and making sure like, oh, uh, something that I am doing because I don't think it's a problem, I'm not accidentally committing academic misbehavior, am I? Uh, you know, it's, it's good information to know. We have a class policy about respect. Uh, make sure you look that over. If you're a parent, I do have some uh, remarks on parenting status. I want class to be uh, open and accessible to everyone, regardless of ability or parenting status or any other factor of, uh, of identity or livelihood. Um, so the first step in making sure that I'm able to do that is just, you know, if you're comfortable disclosing that information to me and telling me any sorts of uh, difficulties you're running up against in kind of fulfilling classwork, that way we can, if it's on my radar, we can work to figure out a solution that works for everyone, right? And then there's also a little blurb about using Canvas and Unicheck. That's basically, uh, can, or Unicheck is basically Canvas's plagiarism detection software. Uh, in order to submit an assignment to Canvas, you'll need to check a little box that says, you know, I, you know, attest that this is my original work. If you don't do that, you can't submit it. So, you know, please make sure you're actually turning in uh, your work because Unicheck will make sure that you're not just ripping it off a Russian essay farming website or something. I would usually stop and ask if there are any questions, but we're recording this lecture. So I'm, you know, probably not. Make sure to send me a message if there are any, right? After all of this information, we kind of have a more uh, to the point class schedule. So like we covered in our uh, section on online participation, right? For each week, there will be uh, one to two lectures. Uh, there will be a couple of readings you'll be expected to complete. And based on the lectures and the readings, there will be those discussion board prompts. Um, it's important you get those assignments, uh, any assignments that are due, but also those discussion board prompts uh, in by the end of the day Friday, just because uh, that is when the assignment in Canvas closes off. And so if they're not in there, uh, we're basically gonna to have to figure out a way for you to get that assignment to me a lot of times. So we have week one, week two, kind of going through the semester. If there are any uh, important academic dates, I will make sure to note those over to the right-hand side here. Week seven will be our last week together. Uh, your history zine final project will be due the week after that, what you would nominally call a week eight, but is actually our final exam week. At the very last page here, I do have some student resources uh, for you. Um, if you don't need them, that's excellent. I wish no one else ever needed them ever, uh, but living in the world that we're living in with all the stressors and complications and challenges that we all have to deal with, I recognize it's entirely possible that more than several students in class might be facing things like food insecurity. Um, there is a food pantry uh, on Wayne State's campus. It is running through the pandemic. Um, so if that is something uh, that you need help with, that resource is available to you. There's also Counseling and Psychological Services um, CAPS, which is available through Wayne State. If you know someone who's going through a lot of emotional stress, um, who is going through a lot of turmoil, a lot of, uh, a lot of strife and needs help right now, but they aren't a Wayne State student, there is also uh, the Counseling and Testing Center and the Counseling Psychology Training Clinic. Those are available to everyone, not just students. What if I'm being sued by my landlord? What if I am being accused of something I did or didn't, or you know, I, no judgment, uh, we're all innocent until proven guilty. What if I need legal representation? Well, michiganlegalaid.com has a referral service and they can kind of direct you to affordable uh, forms of legal representation or maybe pro bono legal representation. I have a couple of friends who work for Michigan Legal Aid. It is a good service. Um, I actually added uh, Michigan Legal Aid on this syllabus after a different instructor I was taking a class with had it on their syllabus. Um, comes highly recommended. So if you ever need help, that is a, a good place to turn if you're not really sure where to go. Um, numbers for public safety. Did I lock my keys in my car? Uh, there's a number for that. What should I do if I have COVID? Um, pretty standard. We're all probably uh, more or less familiar with the steps of how we handle it now, but in case you're not really sure what to do, sometimes when we're stressed out, we can forget some of these things. That is there. So it's a pretty short syllabus. It's only eight pages, despite the fact that I add, tried to put in a lot of information, I even put in quotes under all of our, uh, all of our weeks here. Uh, feel free to read those. Some of the people uh, you may think are pretty cool. Some of the people you might think are not cool, um, but they are there. Uh, they are, have been said and they stand uh, as monuments in history along with our textbook and uh, the work that you will soon be submitting for class.
So I've been referencing Canvas a lot though, right? Let's take a, a couple minutes to look at Canvas together. What's on there? Where can you find information? When you are come to our Canvas's homepage, uh, you should be automatically directed to our modules page, right? So uh, if you click the modules tab, it will essentially just take you to the, the same thing as our homepage, but it won't have this convenient little calendar here over on the right hand side. The very top of the modules page is always going to have the exact same information. This is kind of like a stickied module and it comes with a lot of information, right? So the class syllabus, which we just looked at, is going to be right there at the top. You can click that and open the syllabus in a new window. There are those class assignment sheets we just covered together, right? So the notebook, uh, the textbook notes, the autobiography book report, which is the midterm, and the, uh, the history zine kind of final project in lieu of a final exam. Those are all there for you to use. We also have a couple of these class resources. You might notice this collaborative class textbook. Uh, we already took a, a look at that a little bit ago. We also have a couple of things uh, in addition to that, right? We have digital copies of our textbooks. Um, a lot of bookstores are closed right now. Uh, a lot of libraries are, they have loaned things out over the past year and they are not getting some of those things back. Uh, it might be possible that uh, Detroit Public Library had a copy of Asada and Autobiography. They don't now, I checked. Um, so if you're, running, if you're finding out that you can't find a, a given text, um, we have all three of them here. And then for each individual week, um, there will be specific reading selections included uh, for weekly modules as well, right? Let's say though, that you are not the best at reading. I'm not the best at reading. I'm actually what's called an auditory learner. There are visual learners, there are auditory learners, and there are tactile learners. Uh, visual learners learn by looking at things. They, look, they learn by reading, they learn by watching things. Uh, auditory learners learn by hearing, right? Uh, they do really well when they're listening to lectures, but they don't always do that great if there's a book kind of thrown in front of them and they're told, just read this for a few hours. It's, very difficult for them, right? So we have all of these texts uh, text for you to reference. And if you're a visual reader, if you're a visual learner, that's great. Um, but if you're an auditory learner, that can be a bit of a problem. Well, I did want to point out very briefly that all of these texts, save for Asada and Autobiography, are PDFs that are capable of your web browser to read. What do I mean by that, right? Well, let's take a look born on the 4th of July. This is uh, part one, right? The, we have the full book that's posted under uh, class resources, but we also have these individual part one, two, and three that will be posted in successive weeks. And for each of these, if you are not good at just sitting there and reading, if this is a, if this is a struggle for you like it is for me, you can open uh, these, you can open these files in uh, what I have open is Microsoft Edge, uh, but you can also open them in Chrome. There's an extension in Chrome that'll do the same thing. And uh, if you're not really sure uh, how to do this, you, um, you can download the file. And then if you, uh, once it's on your desktop, you can right click it and it will say open with, and you can choose Microsoft Edge or Chrome. And when you open these files, there is a read aloud function, right? Now, a lot of times when you have a bunch of capitalizations all in a row, it, it gets confused. Uh, but for the most part, once you get into these paragraphs of text, it works pretty well. Let me go ahead and demonstrate this. Ago this past September that I left my house in Massapequa, New York to join the United States Marine Corps and begin an extraordinary journey that was to lead me into a disastrous war which would change my life and others of my generation profoundly and forever. Okay. Maybe you don't like uh, that voice. There are a couple of other voices to listen to. Uh, if you feel like sometimes the voice is moving too slowly, you can increase the speed. Forever. There are times in the lives of both individuals and nations when we cross certain thresholds where there is no goal. So that's another resource that's available for you, right? Now, I mentioned that all of these are going to be accessible, save for Asada. That is because uh, the PDF I have of Asada and Autobiography is not, it's, uh, it's not a text document, it's just pictures. And so um, if you hit this read aloud button, it won't work or it might just give you like a bunch of slashes and numbers that aren't what the book is. 
And I couldn't find a good PDF that was compatible for this system. So if you're an auditory learner and you want to read Asada and Autobiography, I do have a link here to an external uh, YouTube recording. Uh, very wonderful gentleman has a, uh, a, a web series on YouTube. He ran a mini series called, uh, um, I believe the case of white supremacy or uh, commission on white supremacy, wherein this book uh, was read just onto YouTube. Someone had uh, taken the effort to just read the entire book, Asada and Autobiography, and it's interspersed uh, with his own commentary. Um, there are timestamps on these videos on this playlist. If you want to skip his commentary, uh, by all means, go ahead. Um, I happen, I've listened to most of it. I think he's pretty on the nose on a lot of things. I can't, uh, you know, I'm not going to endorse everything he says as an instructor, but uh, if, you know, it's an added resource in addition to the, the audio component of Asada and Autobiography. If you want to read that, but you don't really do well with reading and you do better with listening, the, listening, this will be the resource for you. Okay, so we've covered these class resources. How about week one? After this main kind of class resources and assignment files module, the most recent module will always be the most recent week, right? So uh, our week one, this is obviously you can see down here, May the 4th, uh, May the 4th be with you. Our first week will actually start May 9th. Uh, and Sunday, May 9th, all of these materials will go live. You'll be able to access them and use them and all, this sorts of, all these sorts of things. You'll be able to look at some of these discussion boards that are posted. But what happens on May 16th, right? The next week. Well, week two, this will get pushed down and week two will be right here. So the most recent module will always be right below this first one, just as kind of like an ease of access thing. Within each of these weekly modules, uh, there will be a couple of things, right? We'll have these lectures. Obviously you're listening to the welcome to, or watching hopefully the welcome to uh, class or syllabus and navigating Canvas, uh, very academic, title for this. Sorry, I'm, I don't have the greatest uh, kind of, I'm not the most creative person. Didn't go to art school. But we have this first one. We have this second one. Unlike this first one, the second one I really do want you to listen to. Uh, it's about America before and after World War II. After you watch those lectures for the week, uh, you can, I love online classes because it gives you the opportunity, at least taking them, it gives you the opportunity to, if you want to just do everything in one day, you can do that. And the way this class is designed, you certainly can do that. Or if you want to spread things out throughout the week, you can do that too. But after you watch those lectures, you'll also be able to do these, uh, these readings. For our first week, we have a article about, um, an exhibit that the, the uh, Smithsonian Institute tried to put up uh, for a plane called the Enola Gay. Uh, this exhibit was incredibly, incredibly controversial. Uh, you will learn, you'll find out why uh, when you read the article. And for the, uh, for the other readings, you'll again, you'll choose either part one of Asada or part one of Born on the Fourth of July. You don't have to read both. If you really want to read both, that's perfectly fine. Um, but you're not required to, right? Everyone's working very hard, even over the summer right now. Uh, so uh, if you wanna take on that work, go ahead, uh, but I'm not, for grading purposes, I'm not gonna require you read both. After you do those readings, there will be some of these discussion boards, right? There's always gonna be more than two. So if you really don't like one, uh, you can skip it. Uh, I'm usually gonna even uh, try to have at least four to five. I don't want anyone feeling like they have to do uh, one or the other. So four or five will, if you have to respond to two and uh, add a follow-up discussion or reply in each, um, if there are two you like, if there are two you don't like, you can just do the two you like. Now for our first week, this required one is about that Enola Gay exhibit. And this is probably going to be the only time I require you to do one of the discussion boards. Um, if you there might be one other point later on in the semester, or like toward the end of the semester, or where, I, where I will require someone uh, to do one of these discussion boards. But this is really going to be a way for all of us to kind of get acclimated, meet each other, talk to each other in the discussion board. Uh, not only is it a good class activity and a good way to kind of introduce um, everything that we're going to be talking about for the rest of the semester, but it's also a good way for you to meet some of your colleagues and some of your peers. If you're responding to two of these, that means that you need to 
choose one of these other three, right? If you are starting reading Born on the Fourth of July and you really love that book and you want to talk about how personal perspective shifts between chapters in Ron Kovic's memoir, then click this one. If uh, you're not reading Born on the Fourth of July, but you're talking about uh, if you're reading Asada and autobiography, and you really want to get into how uh, moving around uh, back and forth between the present day and her childhood, or the present day, I suppose, is the 1970s when she's writing this book. If you want to talk about how uh, chronology and messing with chronology can affect a narrative, then respond to this one. Maybe you're reading Born on the Fourth of July, but this book isn't really speaking to you right now, and you don't really want to invest more effort than what you have to do uh, for the book report assignment into this book. That's entirely understandable. Not everyone who read these, reads these books is going to like them. I liked both of them, but some of you might hate both of them. That's okay. Uh, in that case, you can go ahead and respond to the lecture, right? The, the World War II America Before and After lecture, the other lecture accompanying this one for week one. And you can instead look at, okay, well, when is it, uh, when is it justified to drop atomic bombs on a city? Uh, that's another example of a discussion that you can contribute to. So we have our lectures, we have our readings. Uh, if you do both of them, and then you do this guy here, this uh, controversy over the Enola Gay exhibit and one of these other discussion boards, remember uh, an original post as well as a response, then that is all you need to do for the week uh, for this 50% of your grade. There is, however, one exception, right? I want you all to take a moment to fill out a class introduction survey, right? So down here at the very bottom, a lot of times when you see this assignments tab, it will either be for your, uh, your book report, it will be for your final project, or it will be for any one of the five extra credit opportunities that are interspersed throughout the semester. Today though is a blank uh, class introduction survey. So you can get this uh, document here. And then there's a, a place to, once you fill it out, to submit it, to turn it in. Let's take a look at that. So if you click this link here, this will open up this page. And you'll kind of see a printout of the actual history of the headlines study thing, the, the survey. Uh, obviously, I want to know who you are. What's your name? Uh, what's your preferred name? Do you have preferred pronouns? What's your major or minor? What's your class standing? Are you a freshman? Are you a senior? Are you on your way out and you just need to take this class over the summer to graduate? Or are you coming into your college experience for the first time and you want to get a head start and you're taking a summer class instead of, I mean, we can't travel in Europe anyway, so uh, can't really have an off year. Why not jump into classes? Let me know. Um, why are you taking this class? If it's required, that's okay. You can tell me that. Uh, I don't design the overall academic general education curriculum. I understand that there are people in this class who might not exactly love history, but they feel like they have to take it. That's okay. Let me know. Um, what do you want to do after you graduate? If you're not sure, that's cool. But if you know 100% I want to go into public law, then some of my discussions might you know, they might lean toward a kind of a legal aspect of it. If you're really into STEM and biology and biochemistry, maybe we'll have some more discussion topics about uh, STEM, like science and technology and history. We have a whole lecture devoted to science and technology and history. We'll probably have a couple of discussion prompts for that. Do you like history? Again, it's okay if not. Let me know why, and maybe I can make this, uh, this semester a little more palatable to you. Any anxieties about taking the course? Any topics you want to learn about, you know it's something that's covered in history, but you just haven't really been able to learn about anything else you feel I should know. Now, there is a second page, and I really, really need everyone to, to fill out their second page because it is entirely about which book you're going to be reading and which week you want to sign up to take notes for our, our collaborative class textbook, right? So. We have uh, six weeks that are all options. Uh, you can look at them on the syllabus and see which, uh, which weeks you might be uh, more into taking notes on. If you're really into feminist history, if you're really into LGBTQ history, if you're really into the counterculture, if you're really into political activism, then you might want to look at uh, our lecture uh, during week five, I believe during week five. Yes, during week five, we have a lecture on second wave feminism and the queer liberation movement. Maybe you really want to learn about that. Put that one as your first choice. Um, as these 
uh, surveys come in, I'm going to start assigning, uh, writing down names and assigning people to given weeks. So it's on a first uh, submitted, first assigned basis, so to speak. If you really want to do week number five, but it turns out uh, if there's 30 people in the class and six options, if it turns out there's already five people signed up for that week, uh, what's your second choice? Maybe you've had a really rough, uh, a really rough first week of the semester. It happens to the best of us. And you've gone all the way down uh, through three or four options and everything's filled up. What's your fifth choice? If it's between uh, the two remaining ones, do you prefer uh, week number two or week number four? Uh, that will be a good way to, for me to make sure that I'm assigning you to a topic you want to take notes on when it comes time to take notes. And also just to let me know, like, are you, do you plan on reading Asada or Born on the Fourth of July? Once you uh, complete that, once you fill out that survey, you can go ahead and click here to submit it. It'll take you to our submission page. There's a little bit of background information. If for some reason uh, that survey isn't loading for you, uh, off of the main page. You can click it here and it'll kind of bring up a little minimized file preview. So again, uh, the same survey. If you click this arrow, it will actually download it right onto your computer. So to submit your assignment, you want to hit the start assignment button. That'll open up this uh, box down here at the bottom. Now, if you want to download this Word doc and make edits right on uh, the Microsoft Word document, and then save it and upload it that way, you can do that. If you want to print this, uh, this guy out and physically write your responses with like a pen or a pencil on the printed paper. And then let's say you take a picture uh, and export the picture of the completed assignment as a PDF. You can upload that PDF here. Maybe all of that is a lot of extra work and you don't have time for that. And you just wanna kind of look up here and see what all the questions are and then come back down and just enter your answers uh, right here. You can do that. There's a text entry field and there's an Office 365 field to help you kind of like facilitate uploading right from your, uh, your Wayne State office system. So that's how you submit that, uh, that introductory survey. That's how kind of what all of these assignment submissions are gonna look like uh, when you turn these, these sorts of things in, if they're not in the discussion board. If you're not a fan of the modules page, if you don't exactly like where everything is or like using the system where we have everything broken down into weeks and kind of subcategorized by what they are, that's absolutely fine to each their own. Um, you can go ahead and click on assignments and that will bring up all of the assignments uh, that are due for the class for the entire semester and you just choose the one that's coming up and you'll you can submit it through there same thing with uh with discussions if you want to access the discussion board and you just can't be bothered to come down here and do all that you know i'm crestfallen i'm hurt i've sunk literally several minutes into putting that together uh but you can access that through the discussions tab here there's a couple of other tabs uh if you don't know about them um they're pretty straightforward. There is a, cla a class-wide chat function. There's some key dates for a syllabus. Uh, there's kind of like a directory of all of your classmates if you need to reach out to someone and ask like, hey, uh, you did this thing on, on your notes and it was a really cool way of formatting your text. How do I do that? Just, you know, uh, so I know how to do something like that in the future. You can uh, use that there. There is an overview of your grades here and also some class announcements, right? If you are uh, looking at this lecture through the, uh, the welcome announcement that was posted uh, when the Canvas went live a couple, uh, couple hours ago, or depending on when you're looking at it, a couple days ago, then you'll already kind of know where announcements are, or what the announcements tab is. I am a huge fan though of making sure there's always two ways to access a thing in Canvas in case you don't know one way, you're more than likely to stumble into the other way. And so that's why we also have this link right here for the lecture you're watching right now. How did he do that? How did he just, how did he have the link up before he made the recording? What happens if I click on it? Oh, it takes me to Google. That won't be the case when you open up the class because I'll actually have this thing put together. Uh, but that really kind of concludes um, our welcome to class, welcome to Canvas lecture. If you do have any uh, questions, if you do run into any problems, I'm always available uh, by email. Uh, my email is listed at the top of the syllabus here. Uh, we can meet over Zoom, 
with office hours uh, by appointment, just let me know a time that works for you and I can make sure to put it down in my schedule. Uh, that being said, if you have a matter that's like particularly urgent, uh, it may be helpful for you to know that sending me a message directly on Canvas will give me a push notification on my phone. I still haven't figured out how to make Outlook do that. Uh, so if you'd like a, I really hope this won't happen this semester, but if there is some kind of emergency, uh, definitely reach out to me with Canvas chat, but I will respond to, uh, to both ways of communication. That was a very long and kind of cumbersome and, uh, and egregious way to welcome you to class. I know I just bored you with the syllabus and all of the ins and outs of Canvas, but I'm hoping that you're gonna walk away from this lecture uh, with a pretty good handle on uh, class expectations, what all you need to do for class and kind of uh, if maybe there was a resource or two that you didn't know about that you know at least how to find now or that you even just know exists now. If one of you it can be connected to a student resource that you didn't know was available uh, before watching this video, and I call it a success. Uh, but yeah, so go ahead and when you get the opportunity, start working on week number one. I look forward to seeing all of your comments and discussions in our discussion board. And I'm looking forward to uh, reading everyone's survey answers and kind of uh, starting the work of getting everyone ready to have a really fun, but also very fulfilling and rewarding semester together this spring term.